What is up, everybody? It is me, at True Star Screamer. I know it has been a while, but today I am representing the Figure Action Podcast. And if you saw us on Instagram today, we actually got our hands on, we, I mean, I got my hands on, the DC Multiverse Harley Quinn figure. Now, if you ever uh, watched or were on my old review site and saw some of my other videos, um, I have not been much of a a um, Mattel fan, to be honest. The only figures I got was the Dark Knight Returns, Batman and Superman, which were using the He-Man bodies, and I absolutely, positively despised them. This, though, I've been hearing that DC's been stepping... That DC. That Mattel has been stepping up their game. I took a look at her, and yeah, this... um, I had to get her. So I'm curious to see if I uh, made a mistake or if Mattel has truly stepped up their game. I'm usually not much for, you know, going over the packages, but this, I mean, if you ever saw their old packaging, this is totally different. I'm sorry, my hand is totally throwing off the focus on that. Uh, just to go over here, of course, we can see all the accessories that she has, um, the artwork over here. When I rotate it, we get the same artwork on the sides. Uh, nothing too much on the top. One thing I do want to point out is the box itself. It's got this like extra foot, which raises it up just ever so slightly. So if it's not on a pegboard, this will actually stand higher in the toy selection just to kind of get somebody else's attention. On the back, they have their <clears throat> collect and connect figure which is a version of Luther that I am not familiar with. But he looks like a combination of Luthor, Dark, a Superman, and Darkseid with a little uh, John, you know, John Irons in it, uh, or there was a steel. So this should be uh, kind of interesting. I'm kind of curious how other reviewers put that together. Um, also in the line, we have the spoiler, which I did see her on hand. Ray. Which, depending how this figure review goes, I may consider getting him. Um, Simon Bat, even though I haven't been that big into Green Lantern. I know he's pretty awesome. Vixen, another version of Wonder Woman, and an interesting version of Batman. Um, again, I haven't been too crazy on the uh, DC stuff. Though I know the last couple Collect and Connect figures with Clayface and King Shark really knocked it out of the park. These figures here were never quite so, well, awesome. So let's open this girl up, see how she rates. Okay, so here she is out of the packaging. And I did mess around with her with a little bit, and I almost destroyed her, actually, <laughs> when trying to do a little bit of uh, figuring out how she was built, which I did learn some interesting things about Mattel Designs, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if I, I think I may have damaged her resale value. There are some pros and there are some cons. So this is an in, this is definitely an interesting mix. Um, as you can see, we got her into a nice little pose here. So she definitely has presence, which, you know, step one for an action figure, you need to have presence. Um, we've got some of the accessories on her, but we'll go over those in a little bit. We'll go ahead and take that out and take these out here. And let's talk about Harley. Paint is really, really nice on this. I mean, some parts are sculpted. Uh, the actual, for the bodice, this is painted on, but um, the halter top part of it, that is actually sculpted. I am not touching anything here. Don't worry. <laughs> the jacket, um, this is definitely Marvel Legends quality on that. You know, nice soft plastic. Um, technically, you could take it off, but her shoulders are painted on. Uh, jacket itself has some very nice sculpting on the wrinkles, which is very cool. Hair, very well sculpted. Um, this actually has some neat features, which we'll get into for articulation. A um, little bit of paint uh, splattage, and I've come across a few pieces on that. Uh, for the shoes, the laces, um, they are pretty much sculpted on. The leggings, these are painted. Um, underside, we do have peg holes, and we got a little more paint splattage on here. To talk about the face, by the way, um, the paint on that is really well done. You can, the eyes 
are brilliantly done. You know, it's got that little bit of insanity. Um, they're actually very well painted. You got those little bit of, I'm not sure if you can make it out here, a little bit of rouge, the blush on the face. Um, the smile comes out really well. The face sculpt is very well done. I cannot fault that at all. So that is really bravo, Mattel. Bravo. Um, for articulation, now this is where things get a little interested. Um, oh, and her choker is painted on and it was not centered. So I want to point that out. That could have been a little better. The head is there's a peg and then there's a socket in here. I tried to pop off the head to see if it was on a, a ball joint like with Marvel Legends. Don't do that. You can see now she, her head's a little more wobbly. And I'm not sure if the camera can make can pick it up, but there's a split in the neck. I ended up pulling the whole peg out with it stuck in the head. And it was almost like a little bar to keep it anchored. So I'm going to have to run some up glue or something down the neck to kind of seal it up. And oh, I almost forgot the belt. The bullets are sculpted on, the star is sculpted. That could be painted a little better. But, um, and of course we got the two, this was mid 2017? They've been holding out on us, people. Um, anything on the back here, on the halter, a little bit of the halter is painted on there. So, sorry about that. Uh, articulation's a mixed bag. Articulation's definitely a mixed bag. Awesome, the hair actually has pivots. So you can kind of bring it out, make it look like she's swirling her hair around. Uh, if you were having her make it look like she was hanging upside down, you can actually have the hair kind of dangling, which is kind of neat. Um, I said this definitely adds motion, especially for, if you're doing like fight photography. So that's neat. The head can barely look up and down barely move it's definitely more side to side even though again there is a socket in there just the way the head sculpt is doesn't allow it to move um, arms can pull the arms up all the way up to there no biceps no bicep swivel but uh, there is an elbow swivel single jointed elbow goes right at 90 degrees wrist swivel but there is no, you know, wrist joint. And that is definitely a letdown. I was almost curious if I could pop these hands out and peg in a Marvel Legend one. But after what happened with the neck, I do not want to try. But the lack of any kind of wrist swiveling, that is definitely a letdown. Um, with the hands, I've got a trigger finger here. And a regular holding trigger, regular holding hand. With the legs, she can kick forward about that far, and she cannot kick back. Double joint a knee. Um, no waist, but we do have the torso pivot. There is a very little ab crunch in there. Can lean back very little. So little bit of work there, but not much. I can always talk to my boy at John Walker Customs and see if I want to try to see if I can pop that out and have it get dremeled out for a little more articulation, but not so sure. Not much side, which side to side, which I really wish she had to kind of give a little sassy look. Um, hips you can, you know, it's got that Mattel kind of T-joint on there. So she can almost do the splits, but not quite, but that's, Kind of cool she can almost hold herself up but we do have ankle pivot that's right the ankle can pivot as well as up and down so we can get the leg out actually get a pivot to have her kind of pose it's a shame that again no real waist or ab crunch on there accessories we'll put her down for a moment she comes with a red and black bolas and you saw when I first had her out there the hands are really soft plastic so she can hold that no problem so no problem holding that and she can hold that in the gun hand as well so that's kind of nice it's a little looser here still though um, 
these are pretty cool. The gun, you saw me put it in, the, uh, had her holding it before. It comes with a little bang flag, which is neat. Um, it is removable. In fact, when it can, the package are two separate pieces. Uh, this is completely not painted at all. There is no paint. Uh, the flag is really nicely done, actually. You know, got the, it's got a little wave in the wind type of thing. So it looks like it, you know, just rolled down. That's printed on there, but um, that came out really nice. So this is a very nice accessory. I can paint this. You guys seen what I can do? But man, this is just bendy plastic, which kind of sort of fits in her trigger hand. Finally, we do get the mallet. Um, I this is a probably um, I'm trying to compare this to the DC Icons one, but this is a great one. I almost would switch this out with the Icons one if the if the um, peg here wasn't so thick. But I got the POWs on both sides, really well you know printed on here. This is textured for the for the wrapping on it, and of course we got the diamond pattern. This is very well done. She can hold it again with because of the soft plastic hands. One-handed, no problem. Bam, 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 as my daughter would go. My daughter loves Harley Quinn. When I took this out of the car, she was asking, is that for me? And depending on this review, we'll see. Finally, um, for the Collect and Connect stuff, she gets a mother box, which if you watch the Justice League movie, or if you're a fan of DC Comics, this is the things that the new gods use. Also, happens to look like the uh, Lament configuration if you're a Hellraiser fan. So this is a nice universal accessory. I could probably use this with a lot of different photography. So, you know, they fit their, they split their seven collect and connect pieces out per, you know, kind of like how a Hasbro does. But what I do like is this, for some reason, I could have Harley just holding this, you know, accessorizing it in a way. So even if I didn't want to build the figure, which I really don't, um, this was just nice for an independent purchase. Size comparison. Um, here she is with a basic Marvel Legend. Uh, this is a Spider-Man War body. I put a Madrox head. And these are my custom pistols from John Walker Customs. But um, yeah, they don't look hateful together. So, yeah, this is actually relatively compatible. Take that out. Go ahead and go with an SH figure art. Here she is with Ken Masters. And not that these two ever crossed over in a game, but um, yeah. Really, this does not look bad at all, to be honest. When it's all said and done, is this going to turn me into a diehard Mattel collector? Absolutely not. Is this going to disappoint me like previous Mattel figures? I actually cannot say, I can say no. Um, this pleasantly surprised me. I probably on this grade scale would give this um, probably a B, B minus B plus. I would love to give her more. Um, I mean, honestly, the face sculpt is absolutely perfect. The face painting is absolutely perfect. The sculpting on the jacket, I absolutely love. The sculpting on the shoes are great. Double joint and knees are nice. Um, what Accessories. Oh my gosh, if Hasbro could give me a, a, an, a, an arrangement of accessories like this for all their figures, I would be, you know, in heaven. But she loses points with no uh, wrist hinge. These hips, I'm sorry, Mattel. I know you're getting a little more ball hips on there, but the fact you put them on her, I mean, you can see the gaps in the thighs in this when I pose her like this. That really takes away from the figure. We got ankle pivots, which is great, but absolutely no um, kind of ab crunch or anything and no neck crunch or anything. Those are things that take away from it. Still, if you want a great figure to put on your desk at work, something that looks good on the shelf, um, I absolutely can recommend her. If you're looking for something to do more ACBA style works, either uh, drop some money down and get yourself the figure arts from Injustice, or see if you can still track down the icons. Even though she's a little petite, um, 
You know, the Harley Icon is still one of my favorite go-to figures for photography. This one, I do not regret buying. And um, I don't think it's going to be going to my daughter, to her chagrin. So, um, hate to break her heart. But uh, Daddy's keeping this one for a while. Thank you again for watching. Uh, please join us every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern for the Figure Action Podcast Show. Um, we always get some cool stuff. You can catch our previous videos probably somewhere floating around here. And uh, until next time, thanks for listening. Please take care.